Now, the more observant amongst you may have picked up a few clues that I'm possibly not in my regular studio in the UK. I'm actually on the beach in Australia. Yes, that is the Pacific Ocean, and this is the Fully Charged Show. Hello and welcome to a very special episode of Australia Breaking News here on the Fully Charged Show. I'm actually uh, in a rather extraordinary eco-pod in downtown Brisbane. So you may get some, uh, uh, some noises coming from the surrounding buildings. It's quite a dense urban area. It's very different to where I normally live in many ways, but in particular as regards temperature. It is currently about 34 degrees centigrade. That's quite sticky and warm. Vicar, I must go and have a rinse. Anyway, I've just had a shower, so don't worry. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, the reason I'm here is because I'm married to an Australian. We've been here very many times, although I haven't been here for over five years due to obvious things, pandemics, everything else. How did we get here? If you're interested in the topic at all, I've written a short blog post that I've put on the fullycharged.show website talking about long haul flights and the, 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 you know, the, the, the joys and highs and lows of being married to an Australian for the last 35 years. So I came here obviously for a big family Christmas. We're then going to be filming some episodes here. I'm meeting up with a lot of really fascinating people who are doing amazing things in Australia. It really is having an absolute boom in regards to renewable energy, to incredible uh, grid infrastructure, and to electric vehicle uptake. Really, like us, it, it's been kind of tamped down by the previous authority, but now it's going pew, off the scale. And then in March, I will be attending the first fully charged live Australia show on the 11th and 12th of March. I wonder if I've ever mentioned that on the fully charged show before. I don't know if we've ever hinted at it. Like the Fully Charged Show? Then you will love our six live shows being held around the world in 2023, starting with Sydney, Australia on March the 11th and 12th. Anyway, if you're in anywhere near Sydney at that time, it, I think it's really going to be worth coming along. It is the most amazing show. Really what is happening here is very exciting and it's such a privilege, absolutely understandably, a massive privilege for me to be here and to be able to spend time with my Australian family and not be in the cold at this time of year is always a big treat. Anyway, I'll start with a little Australian story that caught my eye. Now, burning wood pellets uh, is, has been a topic of hot discussion at the moment. But burning wood pellets in big power stations to produce green or even, as some claim, renewable energy uh, is quite popular as an alternative to burning oil and gas. I mean, it's a lie, of course. It's a massive con job. I mean, you've got to cut down trees, uh, mash them up, you turn that mashed up wood into wood pellets. Uh, ship the wood pellets halfway across the world, put them in a far power station, burn them in a massive furnace, produce steam, turn a generator, generate electricity, and that's renewable energy. That's called renewable energy. Uh, I mean, it's hard to believe that the scummy people who come up with that idea as, a, as, a, as a, an alternative to burning fossil fuel, and, and by claiming it's green and renewable, is really quite hard to get your battered brain around. I mean, and what politicians would believe that and support that? Well, the problem is a lot of them. Uh, you, you just have to mutter something about renewable energy and, and it's green to a politician. They go, oh, that's good. Or you just give them a lot of money and they support you. Well, except now in Australia, you can't claim that. No. I quote from numerous media outlets over here uh, that covered this story. This is the quote. On December the 15th, so very recently, Australia became the first major economy worldwide to reverse its renewable classification for woody biomass burned to make energy. Under the nation's new policy, wood harvested from native forests and burned to produce energy cannot be classified as a renewable energy resource. Well, what a shock. But at last, someone on the planet has not fallen for the ugly lie that the global biomass industry has been foisting on us for the last decade. And of course, these companies claim massive tax breaks and subsidies because they can claim that their energy generation is <laughs> renewable. Long dwell charging. What the? 
what is long dwell charging? Well, this is a story from The Driven, a really good uh, Australian electric vehicle and renewable energy website uh, and, and news feed about a plan to roll out 30,000 pole mounted long dwell charge points across Australia. Now, in London and in many European cities, we already have thousands of lamp posts that are already on the street that have a new door fitted to them, which has a charger installed in the door. There's already electricity fitted there. You don't have to dig up the streets. You don't have to install new, new street furniture. Uh, and they've become quite a common feature. And now Australia is slightly different. They have these massive wooden poles because all their power is up above the ground. And uh, you, you get the, so that's what's moving the power. And so there's already power on these big wooden poles. And some of them are in completely inappropriate places. You wouldn't be able to plug a car in, but many of them are. And they've estimated there's about 30,000 in various cities across Australia for long dwell chargers. Um, so you don't, you don't have to install new street furniture. You strap one of these boxes to this massive pole and you can plug a car into it and charge it slowly while you're doing something else. I mean, I think this is a critically important of aspect of uh, electric car charging that is very rarely discussed. And that is, if you're not using your car, then charge it. The more places you can charge your car when you're not using it, the better. And you don't have to charge it with a massive, expensive, incredible, incredible, you know, drain on the grid, huge rapid charger. Those are important and they need to be put in, in in certain spaces. But for the vast majority of the time that anyone owns or is using a car, they're not using it. They're leaving it parked there. You know, they just don't they don't use it. So that's the time you should be charging it. That's the whole point. So ubiquitous, slow charging should be in every place that you can park a car legally. Every car park, every space on a street where there is a pole next to it and you can plug it in. Makes an enormous amount of difference. Talking of charging, what if you don't have just one single car that you need to plug in, but you've got a fleet of buses that need charging with really big batteries? Well, there are now 55 fully electric bu uh, buses in Sydney that are all charged at one depot in the suburb of suburb of Leichhardt, the inner western suburb. They have 36 rapid chargers, which are supported by a 388 kilowatt solar system on the depot's roof with excess power stored in a 2.5 megawatt hour battery on site. All the charging is managed by optimization software, which is really, this is a very good story for us, for me, uh, developed by a British company called Zenobi. And this system monitors overall energy uh, demand, energy flows, including what, how, the, how much the buses are charged, the charging rates, the solar consumption and production, and the battery performance. The bus operators that were running these buses, well, before they had, used, had any experience, they'd only ever run big diesel engine buses. Uh, they were initially concerned. They, you know, it's just classic because they've had this drilled into them. You're going to run out. You're going to run out of charge. For years, they've been listening to that. But these buses, which are built in Australia, would they were worried they would not be up to the job and they were going to run out on Sydney Harbour Bridge and give, bring the whole city to a grinding, screaming, miserable halt. Um, as expected, though, we would know this. This anxiety was rapidly dismissed, and after 200 kilometres of inner-city driving, the buses returned to the depot with 40% of their charge remaining, which means they can then be topped up very quickly in a couple of hours while the drivers have a break, and off they go again. Basically, the electric buses are better than the diesel ones. Quel surprise. And uh, let me just say this. No one is ever going to complain about a lack of diesel buses on the streets of a city anywhere in the world. Electric buses are popular with drivers, they're popular with the maintenance engineers because it's so much easier and cleaner to look after an electric bus than a filthy old diesel one. The passengers love them and the general public, when the bus passes them in the street, adore them. They are much, much better. Uh, now, in relation to electric cars, obviously an electric bus is much bigger but not as big as this bad boy. The world's largest construction equipment manufacturer, Caterpillar, has just revealed the first very big battery electric mining truck. Not a hydrogen, not a hybrid, 100% battery electric mining truck. And when I say big, I think, I think what I mean is that this machine is bigger than your house, much bigger. It is huge. 
Each of these behemoths of material extraction can haul around 265 tons of rock at one time. Mining giant Rio Tinto are about to deploy 35 of these zero emission 793s at the new Gudai Dari iron ore mine in Pilbara in Western Australia. I was worried about pronouncing the names of the places, but I actually got iron ore. That was the thing that threw me. Iron ore mine, Pilbara. I would say Pilbara, Pilbara apparently is how you say it. Western Australia. Now, this could easily be classified as greenwash. Oh, so they're using an electric truck to mine things out of the ground and destroy the environment. I mean, some activities of mining companies, it's a well-known fact, have been disastrous and terrible and damaging uh, over the last hundred years in very similar ways to the incredible damage that we've created by extracting and burning fossil fuels. Not worse than the oil industry, but in some cases nearly as bad. Because basically, when you look at it on a global level, nothing is as bad as extracting a fuel and burning it. If you're extracting iron ore and making stuff with it, like I'm sitting in now, that's all made of iron and even steel, everything. Everything we live around is made of it. We use it for a long, long time and then we can use it again. Hello, show me a gallon of recycled diesel and I'll change my mind. But also the other reason why are the mining companies so keen to do this? They have to ship in huge diesel tankers across hundreds, if not thousands of miles of desert so that they've got fuel at the mine site, which is in a remote area. They won't have to do that anymore. They will generate their own power with solar and wind and they will charge their massive trucks with that, which will save them hundreds of thousands, if not millions of pounds a year. I've had a ride in one of these monsters on another TV show many, many years ago. And you don't measure fuel use in, well, you do, you measure fuel use in gallons to the mile, not miles to the gallon. And when fully loaded, climbing up a, a track out of a mine, a deep mine, these trucks will be using between 10 and 15 gallons a mile to drive. That's a lot of diesel that you need to use. And, you'll, and the, the filth coming out of those exhausts is, has got to be seen to be believed. So I think this, is, this change is a very, very good sign. The more we can find uh, the, these niche uses of electric vehicles, I think the, the better. Last couple of quick updates from Australia, seeing as I'm here and I've really noticed a lot of Teslas on the road. I haven't been here for five years. Last time I came, we did use a Tesla. We drove a Tesla Model X from the Tesla showroom in Sydney to the Tesla showroom in Brisbane, and it was very nice. We thought, oh, what a treat Tesla have given. No, they needed it taken there anyway. We were just free. We, they don't have to pay anyone to drive it. <laughs> so we drove it up for free. That said, I'm very grateful and it was a really nice drive. So there's a huge amount of Teslas uh, on the roads in Australia already and, and a charging infrastructure all the way down the east coast and over to or toward, uh, towards Adelaide. Um, but there are a lot of new electric cars hitting the Australian market this year and none of them are from Tesla. Tesla are already here big time. Um, I mean, I think it's important just to mention that the Tesla Model Y is now the best selling car in Europe, bar none. There's no other individual car that is selling as many cars as the Tesla Model Y, which is extraordinary. And you think it is not a cheap car. It is quite an expensive car, but hundreds of thousands of people are buying them because they are better than combustion cars. There we go. But let's have a look at some of the cars coming. Um, uh, which I think really exciting. The first one, which I'm personally very excited about, is the BYD Atto 3. That's already here. People have already bought loads of them in Australia. And in fact, one of those people is my sister-in-law and she has a BYD Atto 3 and she absolutely loves it, which is very exciting. I'm going to go for a ride in it very soon. This is being swiftly followed by the BYD Dolphin and the BYD Seal, all of which have appeared on this channel along with the MG4, which I have to say, I really loved. Also, the Cupra Born is coming here, the Aura Funky Cat, another car I really adored. The BMW iX1, which is great. There is a European made car here. Okay, it's a great big SUV, but it's you know still there. And the VW ID4, another large SUV styled car. The Hyundai Ioniq 6, the Peugeot E308, the Ford Mustang Mach-E. These are all coming to Australia this year. The Renault Megane E-Tech and the Fiat 500e. They're all available in Australia in 2023. 
Um, kind of interesting side note, so I've noticed along with all the Teslas I've seen, and really is an impressive number, just, I forget, a gargantuan amount of ludicrously big SUVs and pickup trucks with massive tyres and bull bars on the front and all the stuff. They love them in Australia. But a lot of them are made in Japan, and I've been noticing that. Obviously, Toyota making big, big trucks that are very popular here. But there's, in that list of electric cars added, there's not one Japanese make, except the only Japanese make that's doing well here is obviously the Nissan Leaf. Now, here's a little story, because I was kind of thinking about that and going, oh, the Nissan Leaf's been around for a long time. I've still got mine. It's still a great little car. There's a, a vineyard in Barossa Valley in South Australia, it's just outside Adelaide, where the owner of the vineyard used to pay over $6,000 a year for his, on his electricity bill, and that was, you know, obviously to run his vineyard, to run the bottling plant and the, 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 the mechanisms. I don't even know what you do with wine. I don't think you tread on it anymore. There's probably machines that mash up the grapes, you know, that sort of thing. So there's six, six grand a year, quite a lot of money. So he fitted a load of solar on, his, on the roof of the barns that he uses uh, for the vineyard, and that reduced his bill by $4,000 a year. So that's quite impressive. But now, more recently, he started using his Nissan Leaf as a energy storage system. So it's got bi-directional charging built in, always has had since every model of the Nissan Leaf after mine, the one I got <laughs> was the very first one they made, but that doesn't have it, but every other one does. Uh, it will give and take electricity through its CHAdeMO connector. Uh, and so that, so he now uses that to not only run his, help run his vineyard after dark, but also his house. Uh, and so he's using all of the energy from his solar PV. This re has reduced his bill so much that he now exports electricity. And to be fair, I should say, this is these are solar panels on a barn, on quite a large property, not a, not a house. You probably wouldn't be able to do this with a house. You could reduce your electricity bill enormously, but you wouldn't be able to sell it. You're not making that much. He is making that much. His bill, his £6,000 outgoing bill, has now turned into a $2,500 income from his solar and V to G system because he sells his excess power back to the grid. Now this is the first business in, Austra in South Australia to do this. It's a pilot project but it's already going to be rolled out to hundreds of other businesses. The site was approved by the South Australia Power Networks, SAPN, which has been leading the way, I'm just quoting them, leading the way in the installation and integration of renewable energy and distributed energy resources within its network. Nice job, guys. It's worth pointing out that there are now regular times when South Australia is more than 100% renewably powered. It's happened again and again and again. They do have an amazing array of solar on their domestic properties and industrial properties and also huge wind farms and also the biggest uh, Tesla battery in the world. So, you know, they're very well resourced. They sell huge amounts of renewable energy to other states. So this the technology to wean ourselves off using fossil fuel already exists and is improving incredibly quickly. We just need to implement it. We can do it. So if you're down under, get down to the ICC in Sydney this March for the very first fully charged live Australia. We will have almost every EV available, more than 40 live sessions plus all our usual attractions including the Home Energy Advice Team, the Electric Launch Pad, Electric Alley, Micro Machines and Test Drives too. Get your tickets to see myself, Elliot Richards and some newer faces at Fully Charged Live Australia.